Hey guys, it's me, Aura, again. Today, I don't even know where to begin this video with because I didn't think that I would be making a video like this. But from the topic, I'm sure you guys have figured out what's probably coming. So if you guys have seen one of my earlier videos a couple of months back about the Emirates redundancy, you would know that just like any and every airline out there, Emirates was hit very, very hard because of this pandemic. Emirates being a rather big airline, a giant airline, the biggest international carrier in the world, it actually got hit quite hard, more hard than even some of the other airlines. Because of that, we had two waves of redundancies here in the company, not just cabin crew, but in every single department. Their goal was to kind of cut the workforce down by 30% and Emirates is a massive company. So when they're downscaling for about 30%, that means a lot of people. I'm talking about tens of thousands of people being laid off. So we did have two initial waves of redundancy like that where about four to 6,000 cabin crew were you know made redundant but we don't know the exact numbers for sure because this is of course not going to be communicated to us but after those two massive waves of redundancies the company took a new strategy to deal with having too many employees currently for the demand out there so now what they started to do was they stopped renewing the contracts. So for those who don't know, the Emirates cabin crew contract is every three years. One contract will last three years and then after that you will renew and so on and so on. So now instead of having these mass waves of redundancy, what the company is currently doing is basically not renewing the contracts of those who are due and here is where my unfortunate and unlucky untimely situation comes in because i joined the company in december 26 2014 and so basically i've worked two contracts and my contract was due renewal and yeah unfortunately for me my contract renewal also came in the middle of the time of corona right in the middle of when the company is still struggling to deal with the losses caused by this pandemic now the criteria for the redundancies nor this non-contract renewal was never specified we to this day don't know 100 percent what are the criteria is uh, we know in the redundancy waves a lot of the crew that had warnings or other types of incidents um, written warnings or verbal warning or absence or um any type of incident in their record were the ones that got laid off in the waves of redundancy whereas now with the contract non-renewal they seem to be looking more at the amount of sickness or sick incidents that we had within the last contract so not even your full career but just within the last three years of your career here at Emirates. So let me tell you that the cabin crew job is physically not an easy job. It takes a very big toll on your health, 
a lot of people leave this job because it takes a toll on your health because you are working in constant different shifts the lack of sleep the constantly being on your feet the trying to adjust to different time zones adjust the environment in the plane itself there's a lot of issues um when it comes to health i am not gonna lie to you there are health concerns that does come with the job and therefore of course you can imagine that quite a lot of us do have quite a lot of sick incidents within a three-year span and me personally in 2018 i had a injury to my right hand where my ligament here got stretched so i was grounded for almost 45 days and yeah so that long-term sickness fell into obviously my last contract because it was in 2018 so basically you probably can understand where i'm going with this so when my contract was due renewal, me as well as most of my batchmates um, got the email saying that it was a hard decision to make. However, they have reviewed everything across the company and the company is still, you know, not at a good point with this whole pandemic and they have decided to not renew our contracts so yeah basically they didn't renew my contract So what I know is that anybody that had a long-term sickness in their last contract period didn't make the cut, they were let gone and their contracts were not renewed. It's unfortunate. So these contract non-renewal waves kind of came twice a month like on the beginning and on the middle of the month they would inform you if you're due your contract that okay you're not going to be renewed in every single batch maybe a couple of people made it like a very few like one two three people would get their contracts renewed if and in my batch as well i, I had like two or three batch mates um, that did get contract renewal and I just asked around from them and they said that they had either three or less than three sick incidents for the last three years guys I'm telling you again in this job doing this job that is your health has to be really good in a very good condition um, for you to only get sick like once a year doing this job so as you can imagine naturally most of us in our batch we're told that our contracts would not be renewed again we really don't know the exact criteria of these terms of theirs or conditions of theirs nobody really knows the company is being very silent about it but this is what we can you know speculate that it's based on our sick incidents in the past contract period so when i got this email saying that my contract wouldn't be renewed i mean i was heartbroken it was happening already in the company we kept positive we kept hoping you just keep thinking okay it wouldn't happen to me like we saw the redundancy waves we saw the big redundancy waves where like 3,000 crew at once were laid off and then after that we saw people each month saying my contract was not renewed my contract was not renewed every month it, it 
it was happening and we were seeing it but then you're always thinking okay at some point it must stop like the company can be doing this forever at one point they will be like okay we reached the target number and now we will stop now we will like keep the amount of crew that we have so we always thought so maybe it'll be like from us we will be the lucky ones to you know be kept we were seeing it happening but still you just have that glimpse of hope inside you thinking it wouldn't be me it wouldn't be me so naturally when it happened it was a it was still a shock it was still a shock and i was very heartbroken not just me but my friends and family as well they were very heartbroken because they knew just how much i loved this job i was in denial for a while i was in disbelief i probably still am a little bit in like denial and disbelief of what happened and i cried many times i'm not going to sit here almighty and say i didn't cry i just picked up and dealt with it no this job was more than a job it was so much more to me it was my dream so of course i was heartbroken i'm not going to sit here and say that i didn't feel lost and helpless my loss was very heavy to me and i think i am still kind of in and out trying to come to terms with it if you guys have been following my story and if you have been watching my videos you would know i am a small island girl from a very average income family who kept dreaming large that I want to go out of my country and see the big beautiful world but I had no means of traveling outside of my country going and seeing the big beautiful mysterious world that was out there that's all I dreamed of since I was a little girl I'm from a small third world country island that has quite a very bad passport. We jokingly say that we need a visa just to go to the closet. That's how bad it is. And on top of that, it's an island. Where can you go? You need to travel by air or a boat. That doesn't really work. So traveling was a major issue for me, a major, major issue for me. Don't have the wealth. I don't have the resources. I don't have the passport. I don't have the means to do that. Traveling was a major issue for me and all I wanted to do was to travel and what enabled me to go see the amazing countries that I never thought I would be seeing was being in this job. Even when you want to travel for leisure by yourself, out of work, being in Dubai, being cabin crew of Emirates helped us a lot because the embassies in Dubai would usually help you out a little bit more just because you're cabin crew of Emirates. This job eventually turned from not just something that I did to pursue my dream, it turned into so much more, it turned into a means that I even support my family with. Me being in this job has literally helped out my parents and my friends so much. I could have never done the things that I got to do for them if I hadn't been in this job. Like everything that usually people or cabin crew complain about in this being in this job was actually things that were kind of perfect to me. I like the irregular shifts. I don't mind going at flights at midnight or two in the morning. I like being on my feet. I like being so, you know, physical. I didn't mind any of that things. Of course, yes, it was a toll on the health, but still I loved every bit of it. Like I felt like it was just, it, just this job was just made for me. Like 
I got to live an amazing life here in Dubai, living in comforts that I could have never had if not for being in this job. Some of the crew here or some of the people here at Emirates constantly talk about this bubble that Emirates creates, this beautiful bubble of comforts that Emirates creates that makes you lose track of the reality. And it's true, it is true, I won't deny that. Emirates creates this beautiful bubble. Emirates offers a very, very comfortable life for its employees and its cabin crew. Emirates gives us a lot of comforts that other companies out there are not willing to give for their employees. The salary here is amazing. They give you all these luxuries, all these benefits, all these comforts. At least for a small island third world country girl like me, they were all luxuries that I could have never achieved on my own being back home. So it's true. Emirates does create a big beautiful bubble. But I think whether you want to get lost in that bubble and lose track of reality is your own choice. It's up to you. People always talk as if this bubble of comforts that Emirates has created for you is always a bad thing and it's good to step back into the reality. But let me tell you, People like us that didn't have this much opportunity in life were always aware of the bubble. We were always aware of the bubble. We didn't lose track or sight of reality, but we were always aware of the bubble. And that's also what made us so grateful for having this bubble, this bubble of comfort that we couldn't have ever achieved. I could have never afforded the luxuries that I have now. I could have never lived my life so independently back home. Yeah, some people can say what luxuries, it's not even that grand of a life that you had here. But to me, yes. The life that I had here was full of luxury. So why is this Emirates bubble such a bad thing? There are some crew out there who are supporting their entire families, four, five, six members of their families, their siblings, from their one Emirates salary. And guess what? Some of them got laid off too. And I can guarantee you that they never got lost in this Emirates bubble. They never less lost their sense of reality living in this Emirates bubble. They were very aware of it. They were only grateful for having been given the chance to live in this bubble, just as I was. Because we know what life is like to live without such comforts. I was supporting my family and I was paying their bills because I was in this job. Otherwise, I probably couldn't have done it. So why is this Emirates bubble such a bad thing? Not everybody has a beautiful reality to return back to. Not everybody has a beautiful country, beautiful families to return back to. If you're planning to come here one day and become cabin crew, what I would say is it's fine. Come here, enjoy life, live in luxuries that you might not be able to have back home. I'm not going to tell you don't enjoy the life here because it gives you a false sense of reality. All I'm going to say is just be aware of it. Be aware of that bubble and don't get lost in it and don't get caught up in the Dubai hype. Some of the people out there are saying they had enough of the Emirates bubble and they want to go back to the reality. You guys, I'm sorry, but you guys don't even know 
what some of our realities are. You guys don't even understand the struggle to simply want to go to a different country. You have backpacked through Asia when you were young and it was cheap. You've gone to multiple countries. I am the Asia. I am the cheap Asia. Where am I supposed to go? Where am I? Where can I go? There's literally nowhere else that is cheaper for me. I am from the cheap and affordable Asia. Where on earth could I, could I have gone when I was young and wanted to like backpack through countries? What visa is going to give me that ability to visit other countries? You guys don't even know the struggles of having that type of a passport that restricts everything all your dreams that you want to achieve. I have lived in a tiny, tiny apartment for a couple of years studying that is actually smaller than my current living and dining. The entire apartment was smaller than my current living and dining area. And I lived in that tiny space with nine girls sharing one bathroom. I have traveled in overcrowded trains and buses struggling to find a foothold for yourself. I have lived not having the ability to buy beautiful things for myself or people that I loved. I have lived not knowing what fine dining was and my entire life before Emirates was like that. So why? Is it such a bad thing for me to experience that bubble a little bit, to live in comforts for a change? It's only after I came here that I got to sleep in comfortable beds or here in the apartment or even luxurious beds in hotel rooms. These hotels that I could have never afforded. Even with the job, I still don't pay that kind of money to be in hotel rooms when I'm traveling by myself. I got to eat from some of the finest cuisines in the world. I was able to take a taxi instead of the public transport. I was able to afford air travel, not just for myself, but for my family. Embassies were cutting some slack on me making visa because just because I was Emirates cabin crew. I am living in an apartment that I have a whole room and a whole bathroom just for myself. And most of all, I was able to achieve my dream of traveling around the world, experiencing things that I thought I would only I would never be able to experience and it's all because I was here in this job. I did live a difficult life back home so I don't see why it's a bad thing to come here and live in the Emirates bubble and enjoying the comforts that they offer. I think some of us deserve that. My life here, being cabin crew at Emirates, was probably the best six years of my life. Me, the little girl from a small island, born to very average income parents, got to go out there and travel the whole world and fulfill my dream. because of this job. I thoroughly enjoyed traveling around the world. I enjoyed how when you land at a different destination and when you're in the airport, how people come and they want to talk to you and take pictures with you because you're an icon. You're an Emirates girl wearing the red lipstick and the red hat. You are a icon. And I enjoyed living my life being that icon, being a part 
I was proud to say that hey I was a part of that Emirates icon I was very proud to be a part of it I got to stay in five star hotels I got to decide where I want to shop in the world I dis- I got to try various cuisines across the world that I never could have I'm not saying that it was all glamorous It wasn't glamorous when somebody was having a heart attack on the plane It wasn't glamorous when somebody was throwing up It wasn't glamorous when you land on the other side of the world after 21 hour shift and you don't even remember your name it wasn't glamorous when you were in a beautiful city in a beautiful restaurant by yourself because all your colleagues are too tired to come out from either the jam pack rosters or because you had just landed in the morning from a night flight and nobody wants to come out but you're feeling hungry and you want something to eat so you go out you find a beautiful restaurant and you ask a table for one and you sit there and eat all by yourself it's not always glamorous it's not always the best it can be a very lonely life we don't get much opportunity to make relations at work every day every flight is a different face this this is a huge company there's too many of us at its peak there was like 22000 crew crew alone so every day every flight was a different face you had maybe a 12 hour window to try and make relations with somebody but it happens but you have to be very very lucky one of those very lucky ones to make a lasting impression in somebody's head in a very short amount of time dubai itself is lonely it's full of temporary people i've had batchmates leaving after just one year of being here because they couldn't bear just how lonely dubai and this job was and that's not glamorous either and then something happens that makes you so grateful and so humble for having this chance in life while you're riding your bicycle through a small small rural village in Myanmar on a 30 km bike tour and you see the small children coming out of their little houses looking at the foreigners that are passing by waving at you saying hi trying to touch you a little bit and then you remember that once you were that little girl from the tiny tiny island country waving and waving at the foreigners that passed by and wondering where on earth did they come from and when will i ever get the chance to see 
and travel the world like they do. And that is truly humbling. I got to meet people from nationalities that I'd never thought I'd meet. I got to go to places that I never thought I could. And for that, I am forever grateful. For this job and for Emirates for giving me that opportunity. It was really the best six years of my life. Now, from here, I don't know. I have no definite plans yet. Um, I think right now I would like to go back to just, you know, spend some time with my family and friends. I might take a break, take some time off to go travel some more to places because now I'll finally have the time to spend a decent time in the places that I like to be because it was always very rushed. People are asking me, after six years of traveling, haven't you had enough? And I tell them, no, no. Traveling will never be enough for me. So I might try to go to a few countries, use the leftover tickets that I have and take that opportunity and go to a few countries and spend a decent amount of time as I always would have liked to. But don't worry, I will continue to travel and continue to do videos about travel. The Emirates videos won't stop. You guys have requested a bunch of Emirates related videos that I will, I promise you, I will slowly, slowly get to them one by one to help you in your future career here. Once you're an Emirates girl, nobody can take that away. At heart, you will always be an Emirates girl. So, I might have lost my Emirates wings. But don't you worry. Aura will always find a way to climb back up to the clouds. And you guys, just be with me and support me while I find my way back up to the clouds. So, with that guys, I'm going to end today's video. It was a quite difficult video for me to do for obvious reasons. I have been putting it off for a, for a little while now. But my journey won't end here. So please continue to be with me. Please subscribe, like and share. I will keep posting travel related videos and Emirates related videos that won't stop. Aura will continue to be on her clouds. So. Um, please support me and be with my journey from here on and now and I'll see you again on another episode of Our in the Clouds.